The duality of man's views on good versus evil are something that define our very view of the world. A lot of people exist with a viewpoint that is entirely black or white, but the reality is the world is a lot more gray than we think. Because of how our anxiety meat in our skull works, when we see something just prior to something immediately bad happening, we will permanently associate that specific thing with a bad thing as well. This is what has helped our species survive and rise to the point of our current era and technology levels. The unfortunate outcome with this mentality, however, is that something that may actually be a good thing will forever be feared and deemed as a dangerous omen. The date is November 15th, 1966. Two young couples would venture out into the woods for, well, some reason, you know how it is, near the area of Point Pleasant, Virginia. Upon doing so, they would come into contact with something that would send them bolting out of the area and back towards the safety of town. Roger and Linda Scarberry and Steve and Mary Millette would go on to tell the police at Point Pleasant that they had seen a massive white creature. You aren't going to believe this, but literally while I was recording this, somebody from Virginia started calling me. It's definitely the topic today. Taller than a normal man, the eyes were also glowing red. It had been standing near the side of the road near an old TNT storage area that had been previously used as a World War II munitions storage depot. Linda would go on to say it appeared rather lithe, but was absolutely muscular, so it was a unit. Standing at roughly 7 feet tall, with the wings likely going out even higher than that, when they looked at it, they couldn't determine any facial features in the darkness, and at that distance, they couldn't really see much of anything except its outline, but they knew that the eyes were glowing red, and they were something that just struck them. Describing it as almost hypnotic, the couples were frozen in place, staring at the creature with it clearly staring back at them. Breaking free from the standoff, they would then take off in the car, but the creature would give chase. Flying at them and keeping pace with the vehicle, it began emitting a screeching noise. It would follow them all the way back to the town limits before breaking off. Over the course of the next few days, it would appear as though this creature had found some sort of stalking grounds. Others who lived in the town would begin seeing this creature in the skies and began reporting very similar strange occurrences, but it's important to take this with a grain of salt. See, there's an issue with people in general. Everyone likes to get in on the fun, and it can make them kind of feel connected and a part of something larger than themselves. The newspapers would report that a creature simply known as Mothman, based on what was told to them, might have caused everyone else to start seeing this creature around as well. So the timing here is a little suspicious, but there were other instances, which we will talk about momentarily, that seem to make this a global phenomena and not just a small town in Virginia folktale. Shortly after reporting of this creature by the couple, two volunteer firemen would also go on to say that while they were outside, they saw a large bird with red eyes. Given the fact that the eyes are glowing red, it would be easy to spot on the background of the sky. The local Mason County Sheriff, George Johnson, would refute this statement, saying that it was basically just an unusually large heron in the area, and they must have seen that, and for some reason he named it Shitepoke. Not really sure why, but still others said they had seen it, such as a contractor who was in town named Newell Partridge. He was walking one night out in the dark with a flashlight, as one does, when he came to a field and saw that something was moving around in it. He raised his flashlight up to meet it where it was as it was looking at him with large glowing red eyes. He described them as if they were bicycle reflectors. Strangely enough, his German Shepherd just prior had gone missing, and his TV was apparently remaining buzzing, which is the reason that he'd been outside in the first place. He would then go on to blame the creature's presence near his home for the two events that were currently happening. Now, typically when things like this begin to happen, first it inspires curiosity, then it inspires fear, then it inspires lying, and then it inspires the truth on the matter. As the stories began to filter out and the people seeing this alleged creature began to mount up, the most chad route of all the sciences would step in, biology, and a biologist would clear the air as to what he believed it to be. Based on all the sightings and recordings of what this creature had looked like, he believed it was obviously a sandhill crane. See, the thing about this creature is, it's not just your average bird. Humans have a propensity when dealing with animals to not really understand just how large they are. Take someone seeing a bear, like a real bear for the first time. It is staggering how much larger animals can be than what our minds make us think that they actually are. The Sandhill Crane is a bird that can quite literally be as tall as a man. On top of this, they have a 7 foot wingspan with circles of reddish coloring around their eyes that may appear as though the eyes are glowing red. Now there is a qualifier for this because typically they would not be in this area, but it's firstly quite easy for a bird this size to tread outside of its established migration route, and secondly, Given the massive wingspan, it's also, again, 
just easy for this creature to cover vast distances and just really go where it wants. It's not a native species to the area of Point Pleasant, and because of that, this may inspire confusion about this creature showing up, and this would be quite unexpected to the native population, which is the Point Pleasantians, or whatever you call them. So now that should be an open and shut sort of deal, right? We found out what it is. There's no need to panic. We'll just move on with our lives. But everything's good. Well, not quite. Because while the biologist was likely right, there are several issues that even to this day seem unexplainable, and they date all the way back to the 1920s and run up to as recently as 2011. Because this wasn't just a single event for a few days that inspired some fear in people, like a bunch of teenagers got together and then slapped some bicycle reflectors on a suit. This has actually been running for quite a long time, and it seems to have its roots in human encrypted lore all over the planet. The Mothman, as he has been dubbed, should it exist exactly as described and not a crane, in some cases is considered an omen, but in other cases it's just seen as a warning. There have been several alleged instances in which it has shown up, flown over something, and then days later a disaster would happen, causing people to begin questioning if he was trying to warn us about something, or if he was the cause. The earliest report of a winged red-eye creature actually dates back to January of 1926. In southeast China, this mysterious and terrifying creature, who the people regarded as mysterious and terrifying, to them was known as Mandragon, with exceedingly similar characteristics. He was seen hovering over the Jian Ti Dam. Nobody quite knew what to make of it, but it was recorded that he was in fact there by several different people. Also, the important thing to know about this is the separation of cultures. Off track, I know, but I, you know, I do that from time to time. Essentially, someplace in Southeast China in the 1920s, that would not be known by a few randos in the 1960s in Virginia. So that kind of exchange of culture and information would not be shared. So it's just very strange. But anyhow, shortly after his arrival in the sky, people would take notice before he then flew off. A few days later, a 40 billion gallon flood struck the nearby farming villages, which led to an absolute disaster for the people there. Over 15,000 people would die from the dam collapsing. Shortly after that couple had seen the Mothman, less than a year later in the United States, they would experience their own tragedy. 85 miles from Point Pleasant at the time, a group of five grave diggers said that they looked up and saw what they believed to be a flying man directly above them. The same red eyes, the same wingspan. After they reported what they had seen, some reports began to come in over the next few days. Supposedly, actually over 100 reports started coming in. Behavioral patterns began to be established in a consensus of what people were seeing. The creature would soar straight up, not requiring these standard flight patterns for regular animals, and certainly not that of a crane. It appeared to almost move like a helicopter. 500 calls would be placed around this time frame to police with everything from strange lights in the sky to electrical interferences, eerie humming noises, and sightings of UFOs. At one point, Mothman was seen flying over a bridge known as Silver Bridge. Roughly a year after this, tragedy would strike this structure. December 15, 1967, the Silver Bridge would collapse during the heaviest traffic point. 46 people would die and Mothman would then vanish for a time. Upon inspecting the wreckage of the bridge, it was found that it had failed due to a fracture forming on the suspension chain, which caused the bridge to lose integrity and then collapse. Mothman at this point would go dormant for a time, but it seems he would allegedly show up prior to earthquakes or other smaller disasters. A larger one would be reported by the people living in Chernobyl. That's right, literally Chernobyl. <laughs> like the one, like the, the place that you can go visit now, but it's not good because it screws with your DNA. But they said that they saw a horrid humanoid with enormous wings, a black headless body, and red glowing eyes that sent a message of doom to anyone who saw it as they saw it rise above the horizon of Chernobyl in Pripyat. Prior to the nuclear meltdown resulting in the evacuation of the small city, several employees of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant control room claimed just days before the disaster to have seen what they referred to as the Blackbird of Chernobyl. Now what's interesting is, considering this was the Cold War era, it's not like Americans and Russians, like, or at least Russian controlled people were exchanging cultural stories. Unless you count that one time where people wanted a bridge to be built, but the American government said no, because it was adding like an extra hour to like go around a mountain rather than just go across the stream. So then that town, I where was it? I think it was in Virginia. They actually contacted the Russian government to give them funding to build the bridge and the Russian government was for it because they just wanted to embarrass the US at this point and it created a whole international thing. That was a classic. 
But anyways, the whole point of this is, is the psychological effects actually lined up with one another despite there likely being no contact. Those who witnessed the Blackbird of Chernobyl said that they had terrifying dreams and felt compelled to look at the creature in its eyes. They also would receive ominous phone calls and heard a similar buzzing noise as others might across the planet. Because of this, the Blackbird of Chernobyl is considered to be the Mothman, or at least related to it, but maybe just possibly misidentified, or just given another moniker because of the local culture. But regardless, this thing appears to have shown up just prior to a disaster, much like in other cases. This radioactive material that was leaked all out into the surrounding area would have an impact on the entire European continent as materials settled all over it. At this point, people began attributing a new idea to him, as there's no way he could have caused a nuclear meltdown. But Mothman surely did show up for it. This idea would have been further supported by a previous encounter that allegedly would end up saving the lives of people, rather than just like showing up and bad things happening, bringing into question just what exactly was this creature trying to accomplish. In 1978, a group of miners headed into work in Freiburg, Germany. They would then round the corner to go into the mine and come face to face with an imposing creature blocking the entrance entirely. They said it was headless but had glowing red eyes in his chest. They had the original thought that it was just a weirdo wearing a trench coat, but then they soon realized that a massive set of wings had basically started sprouting from its back and then that would probably be terrifying. The miners sat there almost entranced by what they were seeing as the creature would then let out a horrifying screech that caused them to run outside and flee. Not wanting to return back into the mine, they would continue to wait outside only to hear a rumbling noise brought on by a minor earthquake. A dust plume would then blast out of the mine, signaling that it had collapsed only an hour after they were scared out of there by the unknown creature. Had they entered the mine as any normal day for work, they would have been crushed by the collapse. They would dub the creature the Freiburg Shrieker that saved their lives. Even more recently, the creature has been seen heralding in more disasters, but I mean, if anything's to go off of in 1978, maybe it's just warning, it's not heralding it. In 1999, the same creature was seen hovering above some apartments in Moscow, which would foreshadow the 1999 Russian apartment bombings. Then, just two years later, he would be seen again. Several people reported seeing some black winged creature flying close to the Twin Towers in the days preceding the attacks on September 11, 2001. They say that they saw the creature also flying parallel to the plane during the attack as the second plane crashed. Then in the days that followed, something else strange would happen. Allegedly, men in black showed up and would begin to warn those who were saying that, you know, these, this thing existed and I saw this to keep these stories to themselves. It would now be some time before he was seen again until he would be spotted down in La Junta, Mexico. A large, hairy, red-eyed creature was seen stalking the area as many people would then claim to have seen it. The creature's screeches could be heard coming out of an apple orchard close to Miyaka Cemetery. Two people would then head out there to investigate what was making all that racket named Angela Mendez and Viviana Lazima. After seeing what they saw, they would be filled with terror, and then later on in that evening of March 6, 2009, a student who claimed to be walking home was chased by the Mothman. Authorities at this point would attempt to track the creature down, much like the group did in 1966, which if I didn't mention, they rounded up a posse to go find this thing, but never found anything, so they're just like, well, maybe it was just like a mutated thing because of the World War II munitions. But anyways, in Mexico, they would have the same issue. They would fail to locate any signs of it. It seemed odd that he would do this considering he may have chased a car prior, so I guess it's not too much out of character, but it was still kind of strange for him to chase anybody. Later that same year, a swine flu outbreak would happen in this area, which I mean, there were infections, but the response to it was way overhyped. This is coming from a microbiologist. I'm just throwing that out there. It was basically uh, a nice a nice warm-up for other things. Sort of like how the recent pox that started spreading was hyped up as, oh my god, this is going to be like the next thing, which it wasn't. But, uh, you know, be careful who you rub your body against. Anyways, diseases are scary, but an overreaction to them is way scarier. The most recent event, I mean, given what we will talk about in a moment and how the whole planet seems to be descending into chaos, we probably are overwhelming the cryptid at this point, we need to employ more Mothman, but this last one it seems to have happened on March of 2011. Japan around this time experienced an absolutely devastating tsunami that hit the coastal Tohaku region of the eastern coast of Japan. The amount of damage and death left in its wake of this disaster was absolutely staggering. This wave was spawned by a magnitude 9 earthquake that rattled the nation as well. 
However, this wouldn't be the only disaster that came out of this disaster. The Fukushima nuclear power plant would have been heavily damaged by the tsunami and the earthquake that would cause one of the worst nuclear meltdowns ever. The environment would be poisoned by nuclear waste and extensively damaged. I remember seeing at around this time, 80 year olds were volunteering to go in and clean up, suffering extensive genetic damage in the process as to protect the younger men and women from experiencing the same fate. Even to this day, it is still impacting this area, which again, Mothman was said to have been seen here just prior to this entire set of events. Now, there are a few things to discuss when talking about the Mothman. Obviously, the biggest one in the question is if it's actually even real. And given all the apparent evidence, it seems like it would be, right? Well, me being me, I'm not 100% convinced of that. Now, about half the people probably listening have written angry comments about how I'm just a douche and have clicked off. But the thing to remember is the human mind when it comes to disasters is exceedingly malleable. It runs along the lines of why eyewitness accounts of to like an actual crime aren't always just accepted as the bona fide truth. And that's because the very memory associated with the event that is also a jarring thing to witness, and if it's tragic as well, that also pre creates a lot of problems. This can cause a person to insert information into a story, believing 100% that that's how it happened, which is just isn't true. And this is a real thing. In fact, eyewitness accounts, they've gone in, said something, a video of what happened was found later, and it just completely disproves their entire memory. And it's not like they were doing it on purpose, it's just their brain was impacted by the event. So let's dive into that for a moment. The human brain will typically run through the process of collecting memories in the short term, which stores them in the frontal lobe for the time being. If the information is repeated enough or it's important, it'll be processed by the hypothalamus where the overall experience will sit there with the details still remaining in the prefrontal cortex. Now this process works pretty well helping you recall memories from long ago with pretty accurate details. In fact, one of the interesting things is the number one way to trigger a memory is with the olfactory bulb. If you say, let's say you dated a girl, right? Like 20 years ago and you haven't thought about her in 20 years. If you smell her perfume, boom, all the memories come back because of the location of the olfactory bulb in relation to the prefrontal cortex. It's very interesting stuff. But with the addition of trauma, this throws all of that just episodic memory into the trash because the brain is made of meat. And believe it or not, it is impacted by the environment greatly. In individuals who witness something traumatic, this can put them at risk for producing false memories. I know I sound like glowy posting right now at this point, telling you, oh, you're just misremembering. Don't worry about it. I just need to get a black suit on. But this is a certifiable neurological condition that is the same reason why, again, eyewitness accounts are not always reliable. The person who sees this event will have a break in the normal processing of their memories and their brains will do what their brain always does. And that's try to fill in the missing information. Now the issue arises during this process where episodic lists of events leave spaces in the brain which will then be added into information or brain will add in information that the person already knows but may not really be aware that they're adding it in. For example, one of the issues in the 1960s with America at this time frame was that during this era where there was allegedly a lot of talk of UFOs or aliens or everything with the Mothman also being an alleged alien, this information was spread as like lights in the sky that were also attributed to him as well until finally something came out that said he was probably an alien with a sighting of a UFO nearby. Now that's not necessarily what didn't happen. However, the name itself, the Mothman would carry its own weight and its own issues. Around this time, the Batman TV series was massively popular. Almost everyone knew about Batman in one form or another, and there just happened to be, at least in the comics, a specific villain at this time that Batman was currently engaged in battle with, and that was the Killer Moth. It is assumed that because the newspapers around this time were coining the name Mothman, likely due to the Batman comics, this may have had an impact on everybody's recollection of events. There is something important to remember if we are talking about trauma, disrupting memories, and events route. Many of those reporting sightings would take place after the disaster already happened. In some cases, people would come forward and say something happened to them prior to the disaster, but it's almost like who recounted what had happened, the disaster had already come and went, and they were like, oh yeah, you know, now that you mention it, I did see a muscular moth with a seven foot wingspan with glowing red eyes just prior to this. I just didn't say anything about it. Like, come on, really? 
But I'm not completely ridiculous about it because there still is the possibility because it can't be ruled out for the people that did see things prior to any sort of event and did report it before any event. In the United States, this may have also been fueled though by the UFO craze during the 60s, but when you get to, again, what other countries apparently had seen, it does raise a solid point towards the existence of Mothman. There's actually a folklorist named Jan Harold Brunverd, and he knows that the Mothman has been widely covered in popular press, some claiming sightings connected to UFOs, and others claiming that a military storage site was the Mothman's home. Brunven notes that recountings of the 1966-67 Mothman reports usually state that at least 100 people saw the Mothman with many more afraid to report their sightings, but observed that written sources for such stories consisted of children's books or sensationalized or undocumented accounts that fail to quote the identifiable persons. Brunven found elements in common among with other Mothman reports and much older folktales suggesting that something real may have triggered the scares and became woven with existing folklore. He also records anecdotal tales of Mothman supposedly attacking the roofs of parked cars occupied by teenagers. Conversely, Joe Nichols says that a number of hoaxes followed the publicity generated by the original reports, such as a group of construction workers who tied flashlights to helium balloons. Nickel attributes the Mothman stories to sightings of barred owls, suggesting that the Mothman's glowing eyes were actually the red-eye effects caused from the reflection of flashlights on other bright light sources. Benjamin Radford points out that the only report of glowing red eyes was secondhand, that of Shirley Hensley quoting her father. One of the prevailing hypotheses associated with the Mothman at the time of the original sightings was that it was a misidentified sandhill crane due primarily to the size of the birds as well as the reddish flesh around the crane's eyes. Daniel A. Reed examined the migration patterns in historically reported sightings of sandhill cranes in the area of Point Pleasant and proposed that in cases where eyeshine was not noted, it was statistically more likely that witnesses were seeing and misidentifying a great blue heron instead. According to the University of Chicago psychologist David A. Gallo, 55 sightings of Mothman in Chicago during 2017 published on the website of self-described 14 researcher Lon Stickler are a selective sample. Gallo explains that he's not sampling random people and asking if they saw the Mothman. He's just counting the number of people that voluntarily came forward to report a sighting. According to Gallo, people are more likely to visit a paranormal-centric website like Stickler's might also be more inclined to believe in and therefore witness the existence of a Mothman. Some pseudoscience adherents, such as ufologists, paranormal authors, and cryptozoologists claim that Mothman was an alien, a supernatural manifestation, or a previously unknown species of animal. In his 1975 book, Kiel claimed that the Point Pleasant residents experienced precognitions, including premonitions of the collapse of the Silver Bridge, UFO sightings, visit from inhuman or threatening men in black, and other phenomena. So is the Mothman real? To confirm or deny if it actually exists requires some proof of either side. There are stories ranging from actual sightings prior to disasters to those who say it looks completely different from what other people who have allegedly seen the creature say based on local cultures influencing how it actually appears to them. Because of this, much like many of the local cryptid stories, I'm inclined to believe it's likely the human mind trying to put together and identify something they may have actually seen but could not identify what it was. So to them, this is what it became. It's much like with the crane. While this could easily be the explanation, those who have not seen this type of crane could easily label it as something more nefarious or strange and coincidentally, if it happens to be near the time frame of another tragedy, this could easily push them into the mysterious realm rather than likely just a mundane occurrence.